Welcome to MRTV's People in XR. This is the podcast that introduces you to the most exciting players in the industry. And here is your host, Sebastian Ong. In this episode of the People in XR podcast, it is my utmost pleasure to say hello to Romain Amon, who is the CEO and founder of ProTube. Hi, Romain. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. And you? I'm doing really well, and I'm looking forward to learn so much more about ProTube and the Force Tube and everything about how you started this company. So, first of all, for all of our listeners and viewers who do not yet know what ProTube VR is. So, ProTube, it is a company where you build rifle attachments for VR, right? Yeah, we... We starting we started uh, designing and selling uh, VR stocks, um, VR adapters for making rifle uh, since uh, 2016 uh, December, and we did grow uh, we did grow little by little, and now uh, we are a legit company in Marseille, uh, and we are seven people working on it. And we are known as one of the biggest weapon sellers uh, in virtual reality. <laughs> you are one of the biggest <laughs> arms dealers in virtual reality. <laughs> that That's is it. interesting. So for all of our listeners and viewers, welcome to Europe. I have a German accent and uh, yeah, Romain comes from France. So welcome to Europe, <laughs> my dear listeners. <laughs> okay, great. So you're the biggest arms dealer in virtual reality. So what kind of uh, rifle stocks do you offer? So these, um, for all of you, for all of the, listeners who have not yet heard about these kind of rifle stocks it's like something that you would where you would put your normal vr controllers in it and uh, yeah romain is just showing it and uh, if you want to see it then then you have to watch this podcast on the mrtv youtube channel so yeah it looks it looks really cool it does look like an arm so um oh is it is it the knuckle controllers that you have there? Wow, yeah. that is amazing. I mean, you know, I also have them, and oh, it works already on yeah. on, on the on your ProTube VR stock. That is amazing. That is really yeah. really good news. <laughs> yeah, we should uh, we we should make the, the dev kits uh, for for the knuckle mounts yeah. available okay. uh, quite shortly. Perfect. So they are really good, right? About weeks. <laughs> Okay. But the force tube is in the middle of the deadline. <laughs> yes. But anyways, let's uh, let's uh, start fr uh, more earlier. So these these rifle attachments are being used in VR games, in VR shooters, in first per person yeah. shooters like Onwards and Pavlov and so on, and they will make the the user more immersed into the game, right? Yeah, because. Um it's actually like having the, the real rifle in hand. Uh, I, I mean, the, the first time I did play Onward uh, more than two years ago, um, I, I could only stay without a stock about just one week and a half or just two weeks. The time, the time I did build uh, the, the first prototype I had. So um, to me, it's a, it's a clear new need. Uh, it's in a VR. need. A need. It's, it's a, it's a clear need, okay. yeah, uh, and it's completely new. That's the first time that we need uh, a real um, proper gun to shoot in a in a game. We had time crisis things and things like this before on some consoles, but it, it did never. It was always attached to only one game, so it was never widespread. Uh, right. the, the VR open really numerous of new needs. Uh, we have the, the, sub, the sub pack industry now. We have all, all kinds of optics. We have all kinds of uh, new way to, for the locomotion. You have um, uh, the new controller like 3D Rudder, uh, the, the 3D needs. Right. Uh, yes, the shoes uh, you, you did show last time. Right. And et cetera. And, to me, the, for, for the shooter experience, uh, the need of um, a real uh, a real rifle in your hand will stay like the need of a driving wheel for your racing car sim. That makes sense. So it makes it much, much better, you yeah, would say. It, yeah, I, I agree, actually. 
you, 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 you can actually play without it. So, the game are not designed only to play with it, but um, the device we made uh, was all about adapting uh, to, to the common VR gameplay. So you, you don't have to, to make it integrated in your game because the, the device can adapt to every situation given by the game, even no, uh, no refer game. Uh, we sell stuff for for Beat Saber, for the oh, Move right. Saber. Uh, we we sold stuff um, for sword games like uh, Dust Vault. Um, every time you, you you need an interface to link your controller, we can do something. That's great. So, so for now, it's mainly refer because the gameplay are distributed like this, but. If the main game would be fishing game in VR, we, we would <laughs> sell fishing stick because Makes sense. it's the same technology. So. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. So at the moment, people who would like to have one of your gun stocks, they can actually buy them right now, right from your website, protuvr.com. Yeah. And um, probably you could tell us a, a bit more about what kind of different types of um, rifle stock uh, rifle stock you're selling there. I know you have quite yeah. a few. We yeah, we have, um, in fact, to me, uh, I, I know I'm the only person to see it like this, but to me, it's the, everything you see on my website is the same project. Um, <laughs> in fact, it's kind of a modular system where you, you can grab the parts and build whatever you want, uh, depend on your need in VR. So the main thing we sell is a complete rifle. So... Basically, you have two sockets or cups where you can sit your controller. You have a back end to make the real rifle. And that's, that's the main product we have. Complete okay. one. Complete it's, rifle. Complete, yeah, the complete it, thing. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it, it started quite cheap at uh, 59 euro in, in kit. So you have to assemble yourself. Okay. But, but it's not this, complicated, I think, right? No, it's it's okay, and we have lot and lot of instruction to help. Uh, instructions, okay. Yeah, Got it. and under this you have uh, the derivative product, as I like to call them. Mm -hmm. You you have the pro saber that starting at at thirty five. You have the, um, the 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 pro stick and max stick that kind of refill but without the buttstock. So you you can just link your true controller right. and drive yeah. it like right. you want. Okay, if you don't uh, want to have this this stock at your shoulder, right? Yeah, Just yeah, like it. and it's way cheap. It's a cheaper cheapest option to to, to start like, experimenting with yeah. our product. And That's cool. Each time that's the same part, you could grab uh, an Alf one and upgrade it later to the to the full Mac Tube experience and etc. And each. Um, each time we try to go with a base product, a base um, ecosystem for modularity, and each uh, each each year we we plan to make a big um, improvement, a big update. Okay, uh, big update right. on this. Uh, firstly, it was the normal stock with the, the regular static cups. You have you have to slip in and out the controller of the rifle. And uh, for the controllers, you can use the Oculus Rift and the, the Vive Wands and uh, the oh. Windows Mixed Reality. All, you, have, you have these cups for all of oh, the VR oh, including, headsets. In, including PSVR. Oh, including PSVR. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is very nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, last time we, we, we did talk briefly, I yes. was working on it. Mm -hmm. And this time it's okay. We are out of pre-orders for it and it's on the market. So for now, we, we sell mainly uh, the, um, the Pro Saber unit, so for Beat Saber. And I have quite some expectation to, to see what will go on on PSVR. Now we have the 3D rudder uh, compatible with it. Okay, that's cool. So, um, sorry, I was just like interrupting you. You wanted to say like, um, you, you are like... Um, like um, um, improving your your line of accessories every year. So you started with the yeah. basic with the with the basic rifle. Yeah. 
Uh, was so, it just the uh, cups, and then you came up with something else? It, it was. It was uh, the the base project was the first one, uh, the full reefer with the bud stock and the true cups. It was the first thing we sold. Uh, one year after, uh, we did came with a new patent to to make our magnetic attachment, uh, specially dedicated to and developed for for Vera reefer problems. Uh, so it was it was one year after. It's uh, honestly the base product is good and cheap for what it is. Uh, the Mac tube is just the same thing, but without the little drawback was remaining on the base unit. So it really feel more natural to to put in and back and reload and do your stuff in VR when you have the magnetic attachment. Also, some there's a magnet, a magnet, right? So yeah. you can, like, okay, for all of our YouTube viewers, you can see it now. You can simply like uh, get the whole controller from the thing, and uh, it's easy to to bring it back because it's just a magnet. For the for the other, yeah. for the cups, you have to kind of put it into the cup, right? And probably it's it's more natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, that makes sense. Uh, again, again, viewer will will more get it, but. On the normal one, it's working very nice, but you have to slip out yes. and do your stuff right. and go back and down. Oh, that's great. On this one, you, you just have to go from the side. Right. You left, yes. have to put on left, and right, have to put on right. So Perfect. it feels it feel way more natural to do things. And on, on, size, on, on side of effectiveness, um, I have players and ESL players that have more effectiveness with the standard ones, but it's because they, are, they, they, they did build up so much uh, muscle memory to to achieve the reload with the standard cups. So um, it's possible to be um, as uh, nice with the standard one, but you will need tons of training okay. Got to it. get the same result of the magnetic one. Okay, so the magnetic one is better, <laughs> in your opinion. I think so too, of it, course. Yes, it is better. More <laughs> it's, it's more natural. It's way more natural, but again, if if you are on a budget option... Yeah, it's, if you want to on a budget, then just go it's, for the it's cups. Way, it's, it, it's way cheaper and you could... It's a modular system, so you just can come to us later and grab the upgrade. Uh, right. And you, you play, you, you'll, you'll pay just a little more because at the end you, you will end up with four cups and not two. So you will have more material. So you, you'll play, uh, pay a little more. Right. But it's not that expensive to, to, to get the option um, by comparison to take the upgrade. Okay. So um, which games work with your stock? Like all, all basically, all, is it all first person shooters? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, easy, yeah. easy uh, question, easy answer. Yes, this works even, with all uh, first-person shooters. Even if uh, we we know no quite no games are made for this. Right. I mean, developer didn't came out. I say, okay, I, I will make a game, but you need an additional periphery uh, device to to play. So it's impossible to ask a customer. To buy something else, but it's a nice thing to say. Hey, if you want to improve your experience, you can. We under this, right? And, um, now, before, about one year and a half ago, I, I was looking at every game and testing every game to to be sure I have no special case to improve in in terms of possible settings you get to to adapt to the game. So at first, the ProTube did adapt to the gameplay a lot. Um, and then, about uh, right now, and since about six months, a little more now, when new game come out, uh, developers tend to contact me or I contact the developers. We, we share the game and we share some materials so they can not integrate, but... They, they, they can test from scratch with the ProTube, so they are sure there is no, pro, no gun stock specific problem in their game. Okay, that, cool. That's how we, we got contractors implementing a very nice gun stock uh, customization options 
and and now the, the developers are caring a lot about it. So all right. <laughs> There's some talk in the background for all of Thanks. you who cannot see that but listening to this now. <laughs> yeah. And you got an Amazon package here, your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's, that's why the dog is barking. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, integration seems to be no problem at all for, for the ProTubes. And for the yeah for all the games all games work that's great. So um, tell me, Roma, what kind of feedback do you get from the people who bought your device? Do they love it? Do they send it back and want their money back? Or, <laughs> or I think most of them uh, love it, right? <laughs> we we have damn low return. Okay, that's uh, great. Uh, even if we we have no problem with return honestly if okay. you get the package <laughs> if you if you don't scratch every anything you just send us back and there's no problem with it um, but people tend to be uh, very very happy with it uh, we try to provide uh, the best customer service and experience we could have because when you're selling a thousand of uh, of things around the world you always have problems sometimes <clears throat> so we 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 are known to have a very clever customer service, <laughs> um, and the 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 most reported thing was, um, okay, your product are great, but uh, you know what? It's impossible for me to play if I if I don't have it. Okay, that's a good <laughs> thing. That's a good problem to have then. So people get totally addicted to it and can't play without it. Yeah. Perfect. That's great. So um, you but that's kind of that's kind of same as a racing wheel. Uh as to somebody who is who is used to, to, to play racing with a racing wheel to to play with a gamepad. Yeah, uh, right. He, he would just don't want to play. He he prefer to wait one week to get his his wheel back. Right. <laughs> no, I, I totally so, I totally agree with you and I must say that um, when I play with your stock, it just felt much better. It just feels like you really have the thing in your hand, right? So, yeah. and it's all about immersion. So I think that's really, really a cool product and amazing that you found this niche in VR where you really make these amazing products and you actually sell a shitload of them. So congratulations for building this company, Roma. I think that's really amazing. Yeah, thank you. So, um, right. But now... We want to talk about something very, very exciting. Well, I must tell you, honestly, I'm very excited about it. I think lots of, lots of the viewers here, they are also very excited about it. And that is the Force Tube. <laughs> so what is the Force Tube? And the, he, he's showing it right now. So for all the listeners, why don't you go to MRTV in, on YouTube and simply watch this podcast because what he's showing there right now into the camera is some pretty cool stuff. So, but let, let's just talk about it. So what is the force tube? No problem. Uh, I, it needs some explanation. Yes, it does need uh, some explanation. So the, the point is, from the start, uh, from two years ago, um, I was meant to build something modular, Re really. Even if it's hard to explain when you have only one product and one option from start, you say, okay, this, uh, I would say this shit, but this product <laughs> have, to, have to be modular and future-proof. Okay, modular uh, and future-proof, yes. That means you, you will keep the base uh, along the years because to me, the, the, the refill need in VR will not disappear by magic. Right, right. Um, so the point is, Okay, first year we go magnetic. We offer uh, people to just upgrade for the cheapest possible, to just swap the, swap the cups and get the magnetic system in place of all the old ones. Right. For, for the first year. And from start, I always say, okay, if, if everything goes fine and I can... Um, uh, we, we can start living of, of this, uh, taking employee and run... An, we are run a company about making stocks. I will definitely go optics because optics. okay yeah because I'm I'm a kind of force feedback fan. Uh, Me too. I have the old uh, G twenty five or twenty seven. Uh, I, I had both. 
Um, I had the, the old Microsoft fly sticks with uh, force feedback in it, the 20, the, the, the 20 years old one that I still use for Elite Dangerous and all that kind of stuff. And to me, it's just an addition to have uh, if you want to speak about immersion. Okay, yes. your, your aim is better with a pro tube in your hand. It's no problem. You're better at sniping and etc. Right. But it, it's more about having the actual rifle the in feeling, your hand yeah. yes, right. and just um, interact with it. So uh, now tell our viewers, what is the pro tube, the force tube? <laughs> so the force tube, it's... Uh, the device itself uh, will replace the, the standard backend of uh, the, the actual pro tube. So you just have a bolt to, to unscrew and that's it. Okay. Um, it feature... Uh, what does two, it do? What does it do? The, the two main features are rumble, so okay. it can vibrate. Okay. Um, like uh, like a standard gamepad controller or whatever, okay. and he have, uh, it have also a kick uh, function. So cool. it's not vibrating; it's deplacing, it's impacting directly on the user's shoulder. Nice. So it's not a mass inside. It's not. It's not working at all like um, like all you could see in the airsoft market or all already existing stuff. So it's a new way to deal with optics in VR. So you really can feel now the recoil. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, and this one is also patented because it's the first to... I, I never seen something that punching directly on a on <laughs> user body. Okay, because so this you're going to hurt some people's shoulder here. <laughs> but they want it, they want it, they want it. Yes and no, because uh, everybody asking me, oh, uh, you, you want to add uh, something shaky on, on a buttstock, so you, you, we will lost our aim and etc. But it, it's more a little impact. Uh, it's, a, it's a big solenoid with huge force, but the, the travel on, on user's shoulder is very low. So it just tap, it just nap the, um, your skin on, okay. on some millimeters, mm -hmm. just enough to, to, to feel the kick, but it, it's not making a huge movement on the, on the anterior anti rifle. It, it's, the point is to very locate the, the effect where you want it. Nice. Um, so we want to effect on the user's shoulder. We will go there and just impact there. Um, we'll assume that uh, the, the rumble of the controllers can be can be handled by the controllers itself, and we can add effect by the um, by the rumble built in the force tube, and you can do the effect for the shooting, of course. But imagine when you are running in VR, you're like this. To run, you have to look down with your rifle to to activate the sprint. So the back end is on your chest, and imagine if the developer integrates the footstep of rumble uh, when you sprint. Cool. It, it's just amazing. Cool idea. Uh, we, we are doing already this in some game we are integrating, and only this, you, you, you can thinking of this only when you have the device and you start to play with what can I do with this, but you, there is not only shooting, you. You, you can, when you grab something on your weapon, you can add a little rumble effect and thing for interaction to repeat the controller little rumble already built in. You can use it as a rumble pack when the, the player is not aiming. Um, you can use it as a kicker, of course, when you shoot. Mm -hmm. And... In fact, if uh, if the game developers uh, integrate our SDK, they, they just have all the freedom to do whatever we want, they want with the device. Nice. Wow, this is really, really cool. And honestly, I can't wait to get my hands on these <laughs> on this module. So I already have your magnetic stock. So I actually only need this little device um, that is uh, replacing the, the buttstock, right? And yeah. uh, then I'm good to go. That's it. 
tell tell us a bit more um, how would it connect to the computer? Probably Bluetooth, I suppose, or yes. It's um, uh, right now the the actual dev kits are working as um, how to say as a common Bluetooth device. Mm -hmm. So. Um, all you have to do is to pair it with uh, Windows on classic Bluetooth connection. And after, uh, when you launch uh, a compatible game or where you, when you launch our little program translating old game to the force tube, because we can do that also, um, the, um, the app or the game um, naturally seek for the force tube by itself, connect to it, and the force tube only respond like vibrate one time to say, oh, it's connected to an app, and that's it. Okay, cool. So that seems to be very, very simple. Um, how about the charge? Like, um, do, does it need um, batteries to for you to put in, or do you charge it via USB? And how um, long is the charge? And tell us a bit more about those details. Let's more. Okay, uh, there is two parts. There is the actual stage and where we want to go. Uh, okay. There. Um, because for for the Kickstarter, you will have two big choice. Okay, two there's going to be a Kickstarter. Choice. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we have to, people don't know that yet. So there is going to be a Kickstarter for this device for all of yeah. you out there who would love to have that themselves. They can buy it on Kickstarter soon. And we're going to talk more about the Kickstarter in a moment, but keep on going with talking about yeah, the batteries it's so the batteries to me will be um, the main difference between dev kits and final products because we will have two very different kind of page for okay I want a dev kit right now or I want I can wait there is no problem uh, let's them do a legit product and etc it will take more time but you will have the final product. So it will be uh, two different cases. Mm -hmm. On the actual dev kit, uh, we are going for standard uh, 1835 cells, um, individual cells. I don't know, I have one, I think, somewhere. Yes. Kind of things like this. Okay, okay. Some uh, looks like a normal, yeah, it's cell, a lithium, battery it's, cell. It's a, it's a standard lithium cell. All right. So we we go for it uh, for the dev kits because it's damn powerful. We can stack those. We can service those very easy. Right. And you can find those uh, everywhere on the planet. And it's it's a Big standard, and they are okay. very powerful. And and look, yeah, you can find already CE ah, okay. approved and etc. That's very Got important it. for. So it's it. easier for you to just build them in, and uh, don't need extra um, certification and stuff, right? That's it. Right. Makes that's sense. mainly yeah. that's main it. So for now, we we will we will go for it for the dev kits because right now out of the box. Uh, it's the most powerful uh, solution we found. Okay. We stack four of them okay. uh, to, to get the, the needed power because <laughs> it's quite powerful. Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, on the dev kit, uh, you you will have to 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 slide the, the 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 side plate, remove the battery, and charge those. So ah, okay. to me, that's that's right. the worst. That's the worst case. Okay. But the, the battery, this kind of battery, uh, we did test it in convention events. So um, very huge uh, use. It was about eight hours battery. Wow. So, like in continuous use of the device? Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. that is good. That it, is, of course, it good. It was eight hours on intensive use. I mean, arcade room use. Uh, right. So we were we were swamping controllers before swamping uh, the the battery of the force tube. <laughs> okay. So imagine on a normal on a normal gameplay session in onward, you would last about three days. That is uh, good. Uh, 
Yeah, but it's <laughs> but um, uh, the process of getting the batteries out is a bit complicated for the dev for the dev kit, or how does it work? No, you you, you just have a plate on okay. on the side. You just and unscrew. You just no, there's no screw. Oh, you just just like a normal. Um... It's just clipped. It just clipped and okay. slided on it. That's no problem, I think. <laughs> it, to me, it's not the more convenient thing. Yeah. Also, you can you can exchange them, right? I mean, if you run if you run out of the the batteries and you have like charged ones already, then you can yeah. simply put the new ones in. So yeah. normally, I actually kind of like this kind of battery thing. Also with the Oculus Touch controllers, for me, it's okay actually. <laughs> anyways, yeah, anyways, I, other people, always, other people I don't agree with that. <laughs> I, I always prefer when you don't throw to the trash a cell. That's right. I agree with that. I, agree <laughs> I don't with like. That. To, <laughs> that I sense. don't like. That. I like to recharge things. Uh, yeah, of that's course. The only I thing mean, I can say. you can also use rechargeable batteries. Like I have rechargeable batteries in my controllers. I, so. I do same. <laughs> um, for but for the final product on battery side. Uh, we should go for a custom a custom pack uh, okay. that we 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 would um, make ourselves or with a subcontractor, but to having something proprietary and swappable if yeah. uh, uh, if possible. Uh, in fact, uh, the the battery side is uh, have a lot of thing to do with our um, pledge objectives. So. Um, I, when I see our objectives, the first objective is higher power available on final product on battery side. Uh, the second one is easy battery swap on the fly. Uh, the third one is internal charge, very important. Uh, the fourth one is wireless charge. Okay. <laughs> so, but in uh, internal internal charge and swappable. These are two different things. So you want to do both? Like, okay, you, you can yeah. charge the thing, but if you want, you can just also ex exchange the battery? Yeah, because uh, in my mind, uh, the, the swappable battery would integrate the charging circuit. I understand. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so, why not? Yes. Because the, the battery as standalone is a product, not only a battery. I got it. Makes sense. So, it's uh, if you have a battery pack with many cells inside, it's better to have the protection circuit inside the battery pack than having the battery uh, without protection aside. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I understand. Mm -hmm. Makes uh, sense. But way more more safe. All right. Okay. So um, so. There's going to be uh, two products in your Kickstarter. One is the dev kit that is probably going to yeah. going to um, ship earlier since you don't have to. Yeah, it will. It uh, we depending on the number, uh, we will have um, a waiting list. Of course, uh, we will deliver by the list uh, just by this, and we will start uh, delivers just after the Kickstarter. Wow. So, that is incredible. We don't, we, we don't promise to, to produce uh, hundreds <laughs> of units <laughs> just uh, during one month. Okay. But uh, we, we will definitely be able to start shipment just after. Wow, that is incredible. So you already have some stock? No, no. But <laughs> okay. uh, we, we know how to make those. Okay, okay. You know so, how to make those. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so in fact, before launching this Kickstarter, the last thing I am waiting is to, uh, to validate uh, the, the new dev kit, the V2 we are, we are doing right now. Um, it's not a big revolution uh, compared to the actual I'm using, but it's a complete uh, electronic swap, uh, battery swap and more power and to put protection for the battery side and side things uh, like this. So I want to make sure the V2 is working properly because the V2 is what the first backer will get. So, okay. so at the time I'm okay for, for the V2 on the electronic side. I'm already good on the production side. Uh, I did my test uh, the last five days on the new little design updates. For it was more manufacturer side updates. 
So now it's uh, it's no problem for me to to produce the um, um, the main backend part. So now uh, we need one more week for the electronic side to be sure of what we will deliver uh, to validate and QA everything. And after we will start uh, we will start production. Wow, so, perfect. But, so but I, for now for now it's it's very and crafted dev kits. Nice. Uh, the the core features will be the same. I mean the 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 power of the battery, the the kick power, the rumble possibility. As a, to me, those and how it connects, how easy it's have to reconnect, etc. Those are the core features, and the core features will remain the same between final product and dev kits. Nice. So. I can I can imagine now lots of people they they try to um, to throw money at you. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. So uh, when when yeah, is uh, the <laughs> when is the when is the the Kickstarter launching? The the Kickstarter will start um, will start before the end of this month. Okay. Um, just uh, just after we we validate the the V2 entirely, we are sure of what we will deliver. So that's kind of why we didn't reveal any prices for now, because I I don't want to promise something I would have to change one week after. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to to know the eventual uh, overcost we could encounter before uh, asking people money. Okay. So, but um, you're sure that at the end of February. 2019 you're going to start the kickstarter yeah okay cool yeah, perfect so yes, very because, soon uh, people can throw the, money the, at you <laughs> the v1 is is working perfectly nice about it's not convenient uh, at this point on battery side uh, because uh, there is no um Uh, there is no watchdog on the battery, so for now uh, we did ship uh, units only to game developers and I, I, I was tending to warn them every week, oh, don't forget to charge your force you want because <laughs> there is no warning yes. and the, the, the battery, are that it's, as, it's a um, OB King uh, batteries like uh, very powerful but If you don't manage carefully the battery, they can they can suicide by themselves. All right, I got just it. Just you discharge it, so if you forget to I, turn it off, it will just uh, go on forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is no there is no battery watchdogs, and we 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 really want to implement this. Uh, I mean, buy hardware inside uh, the the video force tube before starting shipping. Um, The, the, the V1. That makes to sense. Me, <clears throat> to me, it's not a good plan to start shipping. Right. Even it's, it's working nice, but uh, on I, I, want a, I want a nice customer experience, even for the dev kit. Okay, that makes sense. So in that Kickstarter that's going to launch very soon at the end of the month, again, there's going to be the option for people to go for the dev kit and there's going to be the option to go for the final retail product and yep. th this final retail product it has um these batteries that are like uh like custom made for the device and the dev yep. kit it has those standard batteries that the yep. user simply has to put out and recharge are there any other differences between the dev kit and the the final retail version because i have the feeling that lots of people will simply go for the could, dev kit because they want to have, have this as um, soon as possible Could have uh, shape differences because uh, depend on how good is the Kickstarter, we we could go directly for for injection molding or not. Um, could be uh, yeah a lot about shape, uh, a lot about uh, what I call side features. Uh, if you do enough units, it's not a pain to to add a little LCD screen on the side to display information or to scroll on a little menu on it because we have a microcontroller in it. We, we could go for ev everything we want. Mm -hmm. um, 
for now it's more technical inside and a lot of injection molding uh, the, the point is more as i said apart from the the convenience feature for the battery side a lot of things will be same uh, but the dev kits as they are right now it, it's not an industrial thing uh, it's very very too complicated to to produce right now so the main evolution will tend to okay get a legit product get a battery that uh, you you are allowed to have a custom battery flying around the world uh, for the um, the certificate and etc having the radio certificate because at first the dev kit will be not uh, will be sold as dev kit product not for be sold not for be used in public on convention because like um did you see the mansion you had on the on the knuckle yeah this I saw, one i saw that yes i have it too yeah so uh the dev kits will have this label okay because of the same problem because you don't have a uh, radio certificate you don't have the battery certificate and etc so the final product first have to be legit Makes and sense. second have to be more convenient to make a huge number and third have to give very 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 nice side features to the customer mm -hmm. Makes sense. So for the for the dev kit that you're going to sell now on the Kickstarter, how many pieces can you actually produce of that? So how many people will be able to snatch them away, the dev kit? Could be up to, um, to 1,000. Okay, so for, so for this, um, you're, you're producing them um, by yourself with a 3D printer or is it already like injection molded? No, thing. no, no. It's uh, it's on the same production line okay. of uh, actual product. That's why I told you I spent the last week <laughs> to um, I was able to to make uh, my V1, but uh, each time it was okay, like uh, l like um, doing a bet. Okay, maybe it will success, maybe it will not success. I don't care. I have one to do. Okay. It, it was complicated to to make in terms of shape and etc. But it's okay, you have only two or three to produce and you can spend, spend a little plastic on this. But right now, for sure, I can't do the shape. Okay, you, you, need, uh, you need 10 backends tomorrow, I can produce them. All right, that's um, incredible. The, the, the next step is really on validation of electronic in real case because we are swapping everything. Okay. So, we are changing microcontroller, we are changing... <laughs> <laughs> so um, the dev kit is going to be cheaper than the final retail version on your, on your Kickstarter, I, I suppose? No. no? Oh, oh no. it's different. No, 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 no. So the, the final one will be cheaper. Ah, really? Yeah, okay. yeah because uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all about uh, dealing with uh, how painful and costly it is to make right it's, now dev kit. Right, that makes sense. Because it's, it's a small possible. number. Yeah. It's possible, but it's, um, we will not, uh, for, for example, the first hundred of uh, dev kit will be soldered by hand. We know <laughs> this. Right. It's not possible we don't do this because we will need to be able to, <clears throat> to make little evolution if we see problem or to send. Uh, we, we also have in the dev kit some swappable cards. Like a motherboard, you can swap cards if you need. Um, so the dev kit will be highly upgradable. Uh, if we come out with uh, little updates, uh, we could change the cards inside on the main board. We could change any mechanical element by itself. Um, there is a lot of little constraints like this that making it, okay, good thing for dev kits but a little painful to make. So we are solving the last tweak to, to achieve uh, the first 100 produced, 
And after the first hundred, we will move on a more clever electronic board <laughs> um, manufacturer, but with the same component, just more little, more integrated. And after, we will continue to evolve it to be at the end with the final one in the dev kit. Got it. But, uh, for the last <laughs> one. Got it, got it. So you have just mentioned you don't want to talk about the price and understand that. But still, we all want to know how expensive is this going to be. So could you perhaps give us like a, like a ballpark number for that dev kit module? Is it like cheaper than... Four hundred dollar, for example, uh, supposedly yeah. yes, right? Yeah, 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 Is it yeah, cheaper yeah. than three hundred dollars? Three hundred. It will depend because uh, imagine uh, price. I can't trick you when you speak about our company because to me uh, we we are doing the the cheapest and the higher end. Uh, right, at right. the same time. So right now, if you want to order me a refill, you go on my website, you could have the full refill for 59 euros. Yes. And you could have uh, the, the full carbon one, max tube with full okay. option to 200 euros. Depends, right? It really depends what kind of so, uh, rifle you choose. Yeah. But you, yeah, you can, you so can buy, you can buy the, the module just by itself or will you, yeah. okay. So yeah, if you yeah, already, yeah. if you already have the pro tube at home, you would simply go for the module itself, and you don't have to buy the rifle again. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the two plage option uh, are in kind of parallel, uh, side to side with only module or with um, with the full rifle. Right. We have, we have both because we we have a lot of uh, customer that are already have their pro tube, and. To me, if I would be a customer, I would prefer to be able to order the, the ProTube right away, even if I would know it by the Kickstarter campaign, and then wait for the first feedback to come, but waiting with a ProTube, not, uh, not waiting the full thing for one month or, or two, uh, depend when you order it. Okay. So, um... Okay, so you cannot talk more about the price, but honestly speaking, like from um, yeah, from my experience with hardware and hardware manufacturers, it is very expensive to build such a device, especially on in these kind of s small numbers, right? If if you yeah. if you could sell one million of them right away, of course you can you can kind of uh, get much better prices for the injection molds and for everything, right? But if you are producing a thousand pieces. That is just freaking expensive. Uh, the thing I, for sure, the thing I can't say is we, we, we will definitely lose a lot of money on the first hundred units. Right, right. So you're even selling them at a loss, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. At start, it's, <laughs> That's crazy, uh, man. That's it's crazy. Not, it just, it's just not possible to, uh, to sell a dev kit. As I say, as we make it right now, it's supposed to evolve uh, over the time to make it less and less painful to to produce down the line. But if I would sell uh, the actual ones, uh, people would say, okay, uh, it, it leaks some features like the battery, watchdog, and etc., and it's damn expensive. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I believe that our viewers and our listeners understand that, that what you're doing here is like you're improving the game a lot. You're like inventing something new, something that makes the whole game more immersive. And well, Kickstarter is just perfect, the perfect platform for people who want to support people like you who innovate. Yeah. Right. So I, I believe there's going to be lots of people who just love what you do. And who are fine with, uh, yeah, for spending top dollar to make this project happen in the first place, right? So yeah, and and we we are not there like many of, of many do like this, but we are not there to do only a marketing campaign. We are there because we really need to success this kind of thing to to kickstart a real <laughs> production. That's amazing. Um, that, because nowadays you, you see many dudes coming uh, at Kickstarter uh, asking uh, for, for some 
for 20 uh, k euro or little uh, little pledge like this just and the, you you see the Kickstarter they fail they succeed they don't care they just continue the project um, the Kickstarter is just part of the communication plan right um, for us the communication plan is to serve the Kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> no it makes sense for you so for you this is not a marketing gag you really need no. the money in order to make this project a reality yeah because we are for now we are full 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 indies so um, if we want to to keep as really indie like we do yes uh, deciding what are the product what we choose um we choose cost or we choose quality and etc for now we have full power on it we have power on how we deal with customer service and etc uh Tomorrow, if I don't succeed the Kickstarter, what I will do? I, I have two choices. One, I continue selling on these stocks like I do now, and my company is dying in about one year mm -hmm. because that's it. It will be like this. I, I, I'm quite sure if you don't evolve and produce um, more qualitative stuff and etc. Uh, you have one possibility, slow die, uh, no money and trying to do the first year, that's the fast die, because you have no money in six months if you do so. Um, and the first possibility is uh, to, to let enter somebody else to the finance of the company. Right. Uh, <clears throat> no. <laughs> you mean like uh, the other way would be like to get investment right for your company yes. but then yes. in this moment so, you you lose lots of uh, control over what you want yeah. to do right so you yeah you prefer to me, it. yeah to me it's too early for for a growing company like ours to 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 go to involve in these kind of things too early because you could lost a lot at start Right, and because you're so to, early, to right? get to get just a few. I mean, uh, in the in the industrial world, um, 200 k euro is is just a peanut. Uh, right. So, I was working in industry and but on on big industry, automotive and aero, uh, helicopters, etc. And that, that's why I don't want to, to open to finance or whatever, because I'm, I know I'm looking huge for personal. The, the, the pledge achievement or our Kickstarter will be quite high uh, compared to others, but it's realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What it it means if I don't get this money, I can't start to work and invest enough in it. So, what is your goal actually? How how much money um, do you plan to receive through Kickstarter through this campaign? Uh, I mean, the minimum we need, and okay. yeah. it would be considered as a success as a succeed, but it would be <laughs> possible but painful. <laughs> okay, one hundred k. Ah, you will get that easily. <laughs> I, I I can I, tell you. I, I promise I honestly, you. I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I know. prefer to have. I prefer having good surprise than okay. deceptions. All right. Then I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna make it. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, you will make it. Hundred thousand, I believe, for a product like this, which can just increase immersion like so much. I I believe. There's lots of people who are, are willing to support you, even though this is not going to be a bargain price. So that's going to be very, very exciting to see. Um, I want to talk a bit more about the device itself, because what I'm still interested in is how actually um, is it supported by games? So how would, how would games support this? Is it just like something that works via audio that the device tells no. windows hey i'm um, uh, audio how does so it work we have definitely no audio no audio uh, okay definitely no audio maybe later at a time may in addition okay but not the main thing all right uh because to me it's not uh, it's not accurate enough right. at all um we, I, I way prefer to, to taking actual game outputs, uh, whatever it is, 
I want an actual game output. So right now you have two possibilities to use your first tube. First possibility is uh, the game integrate our SDK. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the, um, the Kickstarter at Kickstarter launch minimal minimum number of four games. I mean the main ones. Uh, we will work natively with the device. Okay. So for Perfect. now uh, we did we, we did announce. Uh, you hear me or not? I hear you. No, I just said um, perfect. So it works. Hello? Oh, it, it works. That's okay. I can hear you, but now I can. But uh, yeah, it works again. Okay. Okay. So it, okay. it works. Uh, where but, where uh, did you lost me? No, um, I, I heard you all the time, actually. So, but, okay. But, but, no okay, problem. but um, let's just say again. So the four, the four main games work. Yeah, and so these are, what is it? Uh, Pavlov and so Onwards. And uh, uh, for, for now, we did announce. Uh, only onward, onward officially so we we will uh, reveal uh, the the game by the time they are really compatible tested and very nice with it so we are already uh, discussing with um, over we, we are already working with other devs than the onward ones mm -hmm. but onward for now is the only official one but I can say uh, we have many partners uh, in the gaming industry that will help us on this. Okay, cool. So, so um, most, probably, most probably um, when people receive the device, they will be able to play it in the most important first-person shooters. Yeah. yeah, and the list will be available uh, just before the Kickstarter start. Um, okay. So um, but this is the first way to do this. If the game is full compatible with our SDK, the game is working with the first two, whatever HMD you use and whatever um, VR system you use. Uh, you, could is, you could use it with uh, Oculus SDK games uh, and OpenVR uh, SDK games, and even native uh, Windows ML games. Why not? So, you okay. know people that did buy something on the Windows Store? No, I have not. Never met one. <laughs> so, if I met one, he will be able to play onward. <laughs> okay, that's that's very cool. That's very very good. So, um, so it's working on any platform when you are integrated. So that's a very nice feature. Um, but for for the game that not uh, supports the device natively. Uh, we have uh, a little piece of software that translates actual Rumble's uh, signals. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. So, stop. Now I don't. Um, your your video has stopped now. Oh. Um, how about how about um, I'm going to call you again. Okay. Okay, yep, now I can see your video again. Okay, yes. Okay, you can see me? I can see you. Um, let's see. Yep, I can see you. Yep, works. Okay. So, I was saying, um, for the non-compatible games, yes. um, we have a little software, uh, we have a little companion app uh, that we suggest to install with the first tube. Okay. Uh, that the companion app is not mandatory at all for the native games. Um, could help you on some feature, but you don't need to install it for native games. But for non-native games, uh, you could use it as a, a backward compatibility tool that will sniff uh, the actual uh, rumble signals and translate those to the force tube. Right, that makes sense. With with many settings, you many things you can set and make per game profiles, um, so it adapts to any game you you could play. I with this tool, I can say I play right now all the Steamware library. Mm, okay, so even even if the developers did not use your SDK, you simply use this little companion app. 
and then yeah. you you just uh, probably find some community profile for Pavlov, and then it's going to work. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah, that, that's working like this. Uh, the huge down, uh, downside we have right now with this is um, the, the, the experience could be way better using our SDK because uh, the developer can really modulate the power per weapon and very fine tuning the device. Um, the tuning would be a little less um, precise on the backward tool, but it's working very, very properly <laughs> right now. I, I use it right now on Pavlov contractors and etc. Um, and it works and, great. Yeah, it works great. But the the downside right now is we we are compatible only with uh, SteamVR games. Okay, that's that's really good news. So all the SteamVR games are going to work for sure. So um, yeah. how about the the Oculus games? You're still working on this part. Um, on on Oculus side, we we still working on it. So. Right now, I have nothing working to show, so uh, I always prefer to not promise things <laughs> that I don't actually see working. <laughs> right, right, that makes sense. But, um, but the, 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 the main plan, uh, to, to me, the backward compatibility is more an alternative to, um, to help when you don't have native games. But right now with Oculus, you can work with the native games without any problems. Okay, that's cool. So we, we will announce a little later the, the main games, but proba probably the, the one you prefer will be part of it. Nice. And you know what? I'm, I'm wondering one thing. Very soon, the Oculus Quest is going to come out. Do you think there's going to be some kind of compatibility? compatibility? <laughs> of your of your rifles, first of all, with the okay. with the with the quest controller. Um, you you know uh, if you know the quest uh, seems to be an Android based uh, <laughs> device. Okay. 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 Look look at this. Yes. Look at this. Okay. That's a phone. Oh yeah, it's a phone. All right. Are you going to make it rumble with your phone now? <laughs> Look. Look. Okay, I'm looking. So uh, for all who are just listening to this, we're looking at the ProTube now and an Android phone. I, ha I have a little app. Oh, I, I have to hold it. <laughs> yes. Look. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can control. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Well, even like... If you're like shooting in succession, yeah, it, it's you can get like lots yeah. of hits. How how yeah. how, um, how fast? Yes, is the, the the device can handle up to twenty hertz uh, okay. uh, on kick side. So 20, uh, 20 hits it, per second. Yeah, it's far it's far away of the P ninety. P ninety is considered uh, as the faster uh, the faster rifle you could get in normal games. Okay. Uh, even the miniguns uh, don't <laughs> shoot that fast, I, I think. The, and the, the, the P90 is supposed to be 12 Hz. Right, okay. So, I mean, you're the are, arms dealer. I, I'm not, I don't know so much about arms. <laughs> I trust you as the arms dealer of VR. Man, but so, that's, that's really amazing news that actually your device is uh, easily be able to to connect it to Android, so probably, yeah, it's going to work with the Oculus Quest, hopefully. But uh, why not? I, I would love so. I have game dev contact to do so. But uh, same, I don't have the device in okay. hand right now with a proper game to, to try it out. Right. So um, it's definitely the plan. <laughs> 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 sure, of course. <laughs> So that's going to be uh, like something very exciting. I mean, even if you if you just if you just make the the, the rifle cups compatible with the Oculus Quest controller, oh, don't, don't don't worry. Then you you already have done oh. it probably. As I know you, you have already done it already. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, from okay, okay, no question. Yeah. So yes, the the, the rifle will will definitely come at day one. 
Okay, at day one. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Good to know. So people who want to play first-person shooters on the Quest, they can directly use them with a rifle. And, you know, I, I just imagine how amazing this one must be to have everything wirelessly, right? Not to be, like, tethered to your computer, to run around and stuff. Yeah. So, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, me neither. Wow, that is incredible. Man, Romain... I'm so excited about your Kickstarter. I'm so excited about your Kickstarter and I'm so excited to show the MRTV community more about the Force Tube. So um, yeah, I, I really hope that uh, I can receive a sample <laughs> so I could show that to the MRTV community and um, yeah, then can, can, can tell them how it feels like. So uh, probably then I would uh, simply install that little... Uh, Yeah, that little device then, uh, this um, to make it backwards com compatible with all the shooters, right? That's what I would yeah. make now in the beginning. Yeah. And then I could also use it with the knuckle controllers. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. So I have the <laughs> feeling some very, very exciting videos are coming up here on MRTV showing off uh, the Force Tube, which is being done by ProTube VR. And um, yeah, here, Romain Amand, the CEO and founder here, talking with me in this, uh, in this episode of People in XR. So, um, uh, I have a question for yeah, you. Yeah, please, please. Uh, I would like to answer uh, I, a question. I, I, I just thought about it. So, I, I see you loving the, the knuckles. Yeah, I love the knuckles. Have you seen my video? You love the I, really, knuckles. I love the knuckles. So, yes. so, 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 you give up your Pimax? Oh, no. Actually, uh, actually, the the old games work with the with the uh, Pimax, so it's just the, the you, you, just the new ones, just just the ones who who really need this this pressure. Like all the other games work. Because um, when uh, when I use uh, I, I did use the Pimax, I tried with the knuckles, and the input wasn't working. I mean, I wasn't really? able to click on the trackpad. I wasn't able to. To grab things, and I was missing many features because yeah. uh, the P tool was translating the knuckles into ones. Uh, right. So Steam uh, was seeing it's, emulated ones. Yes, it's still not perfectly. Um, it's still not perfectly um, compatible. That's right. I I couldn't manage something <laughs> to 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 get it proper working. Ah, damn. Yeah, that's. Uh, that if you sucks. if you have something, maybe later. If you have something working on this side. I'm interested in it. Yeah, okay, I will I, I'm going to ask the the Pimax people about it, what to do about it. Because yeah. I think they will they also want the Pimax to be able to to work with the knuckles. So, yeah, I yeah hope so. Definitely. I they will make they will make it happen. Oh, they have so many things to do. They are not get, they, they're not getting bored as well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, we've been talking now for already a bit more than one hour. I don't want to make it too long. I mean, I'm, I know we could even keep on talking for much longer because actually I would, be, I would want to know so much more about how you got where you are right now, but then it would just be too long. And I think in this episode, we focus on the force tube. We focus on your Kickstarter because that is at the moment the most exciting thing. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for for sure so um yeah but but probably you can give us like um like a, a bit of information about your company so it's you and how many other people are working together with you in this right now we are seven seven people all right and everything is self yeah. everything is self funded you didn't take any yeah. investment everything uh yeah you built everything from scratch by yourself yeah That is with uh, no start to invest at all. Wow, that is really remarkable. That's amazing. And I think that's really cool that you're doing this now with the Kickstarter. I think you will have lots of sympathy from the community and lots of people who want to support that approach. And uh, so I hope so. I suppose, I suppose you don't want to take investment right now because you would think yeah, you, would, right you would be selling yourself too cheap, right? If you would take now. But um, I, I mean, it, it would be way more worth <laughs> yeah, of to course. wait a little for this, sure. to, 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 to kickstart on the industrial side, to say, okay, we, we are able to make device complicated, uh, connected object, and 
we have the technology already, our patent and everything. Of course, set. It, it makes sense then to ask for and money, not after now. After you tell something, okay, you tell somebody if you want to invest, okay, you could add this to the company, but it could, it, it's expensive. So right. it, at start, it financing a company, yeah. you lose lots, lots, of course. lots. Right. So it's uh, really so amazing that you could reach this point right now where you, ha where you have built this amazing little device and uh, hopefully you're going to have like a very successful Kickstarter. So um, I also want to know, so you're seven people, you're working on this full time. This is your full time yes. gig. This is the full time gig of all the seven people as well. Or is it like some? No, like um, we are um, we are four, four are full time. Um, we have uh, two student worker that are half time and 80 time, 80 percent right, time. Right, right. And we have the last uh, co-founder uh, working only officially one day per week. Okay, that's more relaxed. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's more in reality, but uh, it still have uh, one of the co-founders still have a real job because. Got it. Oh, it's. I, I keep saying real job, you know. I'm not <laughs> mentalizing, but it's yeah, I know a job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I believe it's a very, very real job what you're doing right now. Like putting everything that you get into this more real than anything else. So we totally yeah. understand. This is this is like a, a real job that you're having right now. Yeah, the, the, this thing is is crunching my life of since course. two years. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So, um, how long did it actually um, take you to develop the force tube? Oof. Um, the first concept was uh, shown uh, one year and a half ago. Okay, uh, one and a half years ago. It, yeah, it was it, it was a, a rumble only device, uh, very very early stage and bulky. Um, we we did work um, very long time on it, but not as main course. Okay. Um, and we are very working on on it since six eight months. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, one person fully dedicated to this, uh, and two other part worker working on it. Technically, we are three persons on the project. Me as architect, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, as a product leader, okay. uh, an architect and designer. I have one person making all the code work for the firmware, software, and the plugins and SDK for the right. games. Right. Um, and I have another person working only on electronic, but on hardware side. All right. Okay, got it. So more, more on electronic architecture. Right. So you've been working on this like intensely, like for eight months, and then probably yeah. now you got to have some more month working on on the final retail version, and then it's done. So one last yeah. one last question now. So um, the the Kickstarter is going to start in the end of february then uh, people hopefully going to uh, yeah to buy those devices like crazy the dev kits and then you said like you're going to send them out uh, like very very quickly like let's yeah. say if if i would back the dev kit directly in the beginning as one of the first early bird packages when can i hold the force tube in my hand uh three day after kickstarter end Three days after the Kickstarter ends. Wow! Yeah, it's the time. It's the time to set uh, the shipment Perfect. because you, you have you have little time at the end of Kickstarter when okay. you you have to collect uh, optional for everything. I mean, we can't. Um, Kickstarter is quite bad for certain things. We can't uh, imagine you back for the force tube with a complete refund. Right. Uh, we will have to contact you just after. To say okay, thank you for purchasing, but now we need your complete name and address. Yeah, I know. Uh, it takes a while to get need, all the data. We need to 
we mm. need to know if you which HMD you own, so we put the good cup uh, with it, and etc. Right, right. So Got it. It, it will it will be one or two week floating. Oh, that's just okay. For, people can for this kind of people thing. can wait for but one the, week. The the, um, the first force tube will be produced during the um, during the campaign. Wow, ama amazing. So um, how long will the Kickstarter campaign take? Like two weeks or how long? Or three weeks? It should be one, it should be one month. Oh, one month. Okay, one we month. Are, we are not 100% sure on this, but okay. the, um, by experience, it means nothing to have something because it's too long. Yes, right. Uh, and people get bored about it. And <laughs> if they don't back, Right away, we will never. So it's yes. it's no sense to to make it last forever. Got and it. two weeks yeah. is definitely too low uh, for the finance engagement we we want to raise. Wow, got it. Cool. So actually, very soon after the campaign ends, people will get their pro force tubes and can use it in their in their favorite first person shooters i think that's super yeah. super exciting roman i want to i want to um, end this now until here i think there was a very very exciting episode of people in xr i think people are going to love the force tube i have this feeling and i wish you all the best for the upcoming kickstarter campaign and i'm sure we're going to talk during the campaign again i hope so too all right man thank you so much for being here Thank you for the interview and be so kind with me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Bye-bye. And that's it for this episode of the People in XR podcast. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me and Romain did. And have a look out for the Force Tube Kickstarter campaign starting sometime at the end of the month. If you enjoy this podcast, why not leave a review at your favorite podcast provider so that more people can find this podcast. My name is Sebastian Ahn and I'm looking forward to meet you in the next episode.